Hello and welcome to Lecture 9 of Financial Statement Analysis. This lecture is on Valuation Part 2, in which we'll look at three new valuation models to complement the valuation models we learned in the previous lecture. I'm going to start this video by, by covering a little bit of revision of what we did in the previous lecture before getting onto the new models. When we look at our business analysis framework, we're still up in step four. We're now going to be looking at that RIM, which stands for the residual income model. So that'll be the main basis of the models that we look at in this course. Last week, I mentioned that we'll be covering five different valuation models in this subject. And in the prior lecture, we looked at the first two. We looked at price multiples, which we learned are a very quick and easy way of getting a rough valuation estimate for a company. And then we looked at the dividend discount model. The dividend discount model is the basis for all the subsequent valuation models that we'll cover today. That is, the dividend discount model is the starting point, and then the residual income model is derived mathematically from the div dividend discount model. We don't have to worry about the mathematical derivations in this subject. We're going to be looking at how these other models are implemented. So in today's lecture, we're going to be looking at the residual income model, which is also called the discounted abnormal earnings model. We're going to be looking at the residual operating income model, which is also called the discounted abnormal operating earnings model and the discounted cash flow model. There's no best model, but we'll be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of each of the models. But before we learn the three new models for today, I'm going to do a lot of revision over the dividend discount model, because as I just said, it is the basis of the subsequent models. So if we have a good solid understanding of the dividend discount model, it makes applying the subsequent models a lot easier to learn. In the prior lecture, we learned about the dividend discount model. Up here, I've got the formula for the dividend discount model. It says the value of a firm's equity, VE, is equal to the dividends for each year divided through by the discount factor. And then at the very end, plus a terminal value divided through by the discount factor as well. You add up all of those dividends that have been discounted and you get the total value of a firm's equity. You divide through by the number of shares that a company has and you get a price per share estimate. So let's recap this model and make sure you're really clear on how to actually implement it. First of all, when we have the formula expressed like this, when we've got D1, D2, D3 and DT, that refers to the dividend each year. And they're the numbers that you will have forecast in your forecasting template. So you'll have forecast the dividend that's expected to be paid in one year, that's D1. You'll have forecast the dividend that is expected to be paid in year two, that's D2. And you keep going on for however many years you've done the forecasting. DT at the end is just the final year of forecasting that you've actually done. After that, the terminal value we have to discuss. The next step of the formula is we have to divide the dividends by the discount factor, that is conduct the present value calculation. So each year, the dividend is divided through by one plus RE, which is the cost of equity capital, to the power of T, however many time periods you need to present value the calculation by. So we started with the forecast dividends for each year. Then we divide each dividend by a discount factor to present value it back to the current time. Then the final thing we need to consider is the terminal value. There are three different terminal value assumptions that you can make. The first, terminal of values, the first terminal value assumption that you can make is that the terminal value is equal to zero. This is appropriate for a company that we expect has a limited life. For example, a mining company, when they've run out of gold to mine, they won't be paying any more dividends, so the expected future dividend will be zero. The second terminal value assumption is that the dividend will stay constant forever. So whatever dividend you have forecast in your final forecast in your DT, Every year in the future, the company will continue to pay that same dividend. So if it's a $2 per share dividend in the fifth year that you forecast, then you assume it's going to be a $2 per share dividend every year into the future. That constant dividend then gets divided through by the cost of equity capital. This is called a perpetuity calculation. And the key thing to remember is that you are dividing through by RE, not 1 plus RE like all the other present value calculations. The third terminal value assumption is that the dividend will continue growing into the future. So here we've talked about if the dividend continues growing at an exponential rate, so it's increasing by a set percentage every year. So we could have, for example, we expect a dividend to grow by 2% every year because roughly the economy will expect to grow by 2% every year. So when we do the terminal value with growth, we have to take our final forecast dividend and multiply it by our growth factor to get next year's expected dividend. We then divide through next year's expected dividend by 
R, the cost of equity capital, minus G, the growth factor that we've forecast. And that will give us the terminal value. And remember, the terminal value then has to be discounted back as well to get the present value. We then add, add up all those terms and we get the value of equity for a company. Previously, we just looked at the formula for the dividend discount factor and how it's applied. Now I'm going to briefly show you how that's applied in Excel. How have I broken down that formula into the different rows in an Excel table like this? So this is our valuation question from last week on Anna's company, applying the dividend discount model. We start by forecasting the dividends. We then have the discount factors. We calculate the present value of the dividends. And then we deal with our terminal value and present value in the terminal value, add it all up to get the value of equity. So let's look at that on a line by line basis. From my forecasting template, I get my future dividend forecast for each year. So in this case, I've got dividend forecast from year one out to year five. The next row, I have calculated what we call the discount factors. That is for each year, one plus RE, my cost of equity capital, to the power of however many time periods. So in year one, one plus 16% to the power of one. In year two, one plus 16% to the power of two, etc. all those years. So I've got the discount factors for each of my five years calculated here. The next row, I've actually calculated the present value of each dividend. That is, I've taken the dividend for each year and divided through by that year's discount factor. The final thing I need to consider is the terminal value. So in this particular case, we're assuming the terminal value with growth. So my dividend in year five, I think is gonna continue growing at 5% per year forever. So I need to calculate a dividend in year six. It is year five's dividend times one plus 0 0.05. So I've put in that 5% growth to calculate year six dividend. I then have to divide that dividend forecast by RE, the cost of equity capital, minus G, the 5% growth rate. And that gives me the terminal value. Don't forget you then have to discount that terminal value by the year five discount factor as well. And then you get up to the final step. You add up all the discounted dividends plus the discounted terminal value to get the total value of equity. If you also knew how many shares the company had, you would divide through by the number of shares to get a price per share. That's all the revision I wanted to cover for the dividend discount model. In the next video, we're gonna start looking at the residual income model, the residual operating income model, and the discounted cash flow model.